today from Orchard Park, New York. It's week four of the NFL on EA Sports. Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills taking on Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. From the home of the Bills since way back in 1973, there's a look at Bills Stadium just outside of Buffalo, New York. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get sent to match up with the Houston Texans. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks. Certainly. It's the first weekend of autumn, and the NFL is in full swing as off we go on EA Sports. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here come the Bills for their first goal on offense, led by their Pro Bowl quarterback. Now in his fourth season, it's Josh Allen. And it felt like in watching the game tape, he got everyone involved last week. He know? was a manager. He really was. That's a great way to put it because they ran the ball some, they threw it accurately. One touchdown pass, so he didn't, you know, break the bank doing that, but he didn't throw any interceptions. That's the bottom line. That's why a defense loves a quarterback like that. Doesn't and he fires one that's intercepted. Zach Cunningham with a pick. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. And the Texans ready to take over here on offense. And it's Deshaun Watson at the controls in his fifth season now in the NFL. And what he's thinking about right now is first down, let's find a way to make a big play. Because when you get a sudden change situation and that defense has to rush onto the field unexpectedly, you might catch them having a defensive breakdown or not quite prepared. And it was really sudden after the first play picked off. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, this defense for the Bills, they were terrific a week ago in the win over Washington. And what I saw on film was a nearly unstoppable pass rush. Five sacks last week, plenty of hurries given up. So now what do you do on offense? You just max protect, keep everyone in and run the ball? Or maybe just one or two receiver routes in order to try and keep your quarterback upright. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. To throw is Watson. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Jordan. And he is going to have a Texans first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. It goes as a gain of eight. It moves the chains. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. Yeah, we talk about complimentary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them, to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got us a turnover. <laughs> we appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of eight. Ball on the eight, second and two. Back to throw, Watson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Here's Watson. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
And this Charles definitely not what they were wanting to see. Remember, he threw three interceptions in the loss last week, and now he gives the ball away again here in the very first quarter. And you have to think that this was drilled into him all week, too, by his teammates, by his coaching staff. They've told him all week long, we've got to protect the football. They probably crossed that fine line with giving him the right advice and saying it too much, and it turned out that it got into his head a little bit. Now the first carry for Zach Moss. And space opened up a bit. He's able to take this up past the 10. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Devin Singletary with his first carry of the game. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Here's Allen to throw it. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he is going to have a Bills first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. Another try after the first down sack. Trubisky going deep for Diggs. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That's caught by Hollister. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Oh, it is the punt team now as this one sent away. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. A shotgun snap for Watson. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he finally goes down at the 23-yard line. 
We know he's good at catching the football, but then after the catch, he's got escapability. Not only that, he's got some toughness as well because you know he's coached very hard to make sure he battles through, breaks tackles, and then they finish with, but don't fumble the football. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Not quite the success they had last play. This one goes for three yards. On second and seven, Watson. And he'll find Aikens there, complete. And the stiff arm made it a pretty little run. Not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. Seven yards on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. From the 10, first and goal. They'll run with Lindsey. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. One more time with Lindsey. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Now Watson on third and goal. And this is going to be intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And not the first quarter that he was hoping for. Now two interceptions thrown. Well, the good ones, they find a way to compartmentalize, right? Put these behind them, have that short memory, but understand why they threw the two interceptions. They go on and usually play a pretty decent game. Other quarterbacks, they have a hard time getting past it and often put the ball up for grabs the rest of the ball game. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. Tackle made by Whitney Merciless. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now in Buffalo. It's the Bills in control of the football. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Finding Knox there, complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I like this young guy out of Ole Miss in his third year with Buffalo. Prototypical size for a tight end, 6'4", 254. I thought 2020 would be a big year for him. I do think it will happen in 2021. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Throwing here, Trubisky. And Diggs has it. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Another first down, this time on a gain of 19. We all saw the town, the big plays in Minnesota, but Stephon Diggs really elevated his game in Buffalo last year. Led the NFL in catches with 127. There's another one right there. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On the handoff, it's Moss. I give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Allen's throw is complete. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. 
Trubisky now to throw on third down. A quick throw going to be caught by Diggs. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield. They're understanding the coverages and they're finding the open holes in the defense. First trip to the red zone for the Bills. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. Now Trubisky to throw. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Oh, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. Second and 10 now, it's Trubisky. On the left side, he finds Beasley. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Throwing once more, it's Trubisky. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Brandon Dunn. He's the culprit, causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. The kick by Bass is good. And the Bills will take a 3-0 lead. So a good kick there. They put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Either not, way. not the time, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. And two interceptions thrown here in this first half. You hear it, no matter the sport, they say the great athletes, they can kind of have a short-term memory, but that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done, but I played with a guy who threw two interceptions in the first quarter of a really big game we were playing. Johnny Unitas? And no, not, not quite of that level <laughs> and not of that age. But I remember... I was looking, going for the age. <laughs> and he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. Ed Oliver, that time, the one to get in there and bring him down. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game, watching this offensive line, because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit, right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. A give running right, Lindsey. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense going to have to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 17. Now Watson. That's complete to the tight end, Akins. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the coverage was tight that time. They allowed the pass underneath to him, but they rallied to him pretty fast, too. Converged on him and got him down. That'll bring up fourth down. The Texans' new punter for 2021, Cameron Johnston, on to punt. As he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. Call that a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten. For the Buffalo offense and Devin Singletary heading back out there. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but... I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. But we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. 
They can't wait to have time to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series. So those surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. The time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, be able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 41. Off the play fake, here's Trubisky. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Give him eight on the play, and it'll be a second down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Looking to throw again on second down. Trubisky, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Looking to throw again, Trubisky. He hits Beasley right side. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. That kick, by the way, Charles, a career long. But we did watch him in pregame, and he hit from this distance, so not a surprise. But there still is something exciting about it, carrying it over from practice and pregame to actually doing it in live action. It's all good, man. It's all good. Philip Lindsay and the rest of the offense heading back out. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people, find some other playmakers, but always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Watson. Working the middle, and he's got it complete to Aikens, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. He's checking, he's checking, he's checking. Grab, grab. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Watson looks to throw again. This is Aikens hauling in the short pass. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Throwing on third down, Watson. And now Watson throws another interception. Tredavious White with a pick. Well, this is just crazy. He's got three interceptions, Charles, and we haven't even departed the first half of this ball game. I think if you're looking at the stats right now, you're saying, all right, who's the leading receiver? Well, can you flip it around and say that maybe he is and could be for the game the way that things are going right now? I think if it's him, he wants to be on the field at all times. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are 
are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Pressure comes and Trubisky goes down. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll punt it away for the second time. A good return there, 17 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Set to take over again to Sean Watson and this Texans offense. And I guess right now as we look at some of his struggles today, the term next play really applies here. He's got to move on. I love where your head is on that because that's where his head needs to be, exactly what you said. Yes, there have been mistakes made, but he's got to move on and play the next play as if it didn't happen, keep his confidence up. But how about the guys on the defensive side of the ball? They've got to be feeling great about what's going on right now. They've already gotten to him a few times. They want to keep that up. Maybe they can pick off a few more. Well, they disrupted already for three INTs. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Now it's Watson. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Off the edge, Mario Addison gets the sack. To try again after the sack. Watson got this into the hands of the tight end, Jordan. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. Here's Watson. He's going to float this over the middle, deep. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So a couple of field goals, that's all we've been able to muster through two quarters of play. 6-0 is our count at the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Time to give you folks at home a look around the NFL on this first official weekend of fall. So let's get to it. We'll start up at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. And it's the Titans on top as that one draws close to halftime. Julio Jones, a touchdown reception. From there, we'll stay in the AFC East as we jet down the coast to check on the Dolphins at Hard Rock Stadium. And you can see there is the visiting Colts who have the lead in that one. T.Y. Hilton, a touchdown reception. Lastly, let's head to Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati see what's happening with the Bengals. And they were victorious in that one over the visiting Jacksonville Jaguars. Joe Burrow, excellent in the victory as his guys moved to three and one after four games. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Bills with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. Now to return, this is David Johnson, and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Deshaun Watson and the Texans offense trot back out there. And that first half was nothing short of a disaster. Zero points on the scoreboard and a big three in the INT column. So they've got to get him going, obviously, right? So you've got to get him in rhythm. And we always think of short passes. I think of jet sweeps where they just kind of toss the ball. Foot. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. A.J. Epinesa in there to get him. It's a loss of five. He was still looking through his progressions and going through his receiver options, and while he was doing that, the defense got to him quickly in the pocket. And it was a great example of zone coverage. Well executed, well coordinated. All the receivers were covered, and he couldn't evade the rush back in the pocket. Behind the sticks here with a second and 15. Another try after the first down sack. Watson on the ball is out. Watson lost it. And the Bills have recovered. A little careless.
pass for the football, and he also had a fumble loss last week, didn't he? He certainly did, and when I'm watching him play, the one thing that comes to mind is always remember, traffic, turbulence, people around you, two hands. Get two hands on the ball. Grip it tight. I know it looks cool to have it in one hand. Put it away. Tuck it away because you've got to take care of the ball. The defense gets him the ball via the turnover. Now can this offense cash in? First and goal. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Mitchell Trubisky, his first touchdown on the year. And the Bills use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert. Out of the end zone comes Johnson. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Texans getting set here to take over again on offense. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long. They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> and he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. 22 yards there, a first down. Just a simple tap pass, but it pays off in a big way. And sometimes the simple stuff causes the most problems for a defense because there's a breakdown in communication there. When that receiver goes behind the line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going in motion, someone either has to go with him or he has to be passed off to another defender. Somehow they didn't get that communicated well, and it turned into a nice play. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Thirteen yards remaining on second down. Watson now to throw. And that's complete to Cooks. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. <laughs> Operating from the gun, Watson. And he'll find QT on the right side complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. But look what we have here, a sustained drive. And that was certainly a wall in the first half. They really struggled to try and move the football. But right now, they certainly seem to have the formula working. Let's see if they can keep it up. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. The first down carry here for Johnson. 
Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run-pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? From the 35 on second down, Watson. This is caught. It's Cooks. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. First down, Texans. Watson hooking up with Cooks. Back to throw. Watson. Screen pass to Lindsey. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. And that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And yeah, he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And this will be swung out for Lindsey. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A very important third down conversion right there, because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Watson going to pull back the handoff and keep it himself. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. They've been in the red zone three times in this game and have not scored a single point. Can they break through here on second and goal? And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Looking to throw. Watson. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Jordan Akins, his first touchdown on the year. And the Texans draw a bit closer. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. So that drive spans 13 plays. And the result, a Houston touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Here comes Marquez Stevenson now from his end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So here are the Bills to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Moss. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. A give, Singletary right side. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. On third down, Trubisky. Get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down.
They'll run on first down with Moss. Escapes the defender. And he's going to have a Bills first down as the tackle made at about the 43-yard line. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 43. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Play action. Now Trubisky. Sliding out of the pocket. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he'll get nothing out of that one. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. On the give, this is Moss. And he'll take this one down near the 15. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. The Bills on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Works right side into the hands of the tight end, Knox. And he'll be brought down shy of the first down marker at the 11. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. The kick by Bass is good. And that now makes this a 15-7 game. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And remember, despite giving up the field goal, this is still a one-score game. They're in need of the touchdown and a two-point conversion. A field goal on this drive likely doesn't do... Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Defense, they were swarming that time and ultimately got to him before he could get rid of the football and knocked it free. And don't you feel just a little bit of sympathy for him back there, though? So much going on, so much swirling around. He's trying to find someone downfield. He's trying to move around to find an open target. Sometimes you forget the number one thing, take care of the football. They'll run on first down. Singletary. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And it's third and short. Now it's Trubisky. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And the Bills are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that pickup of a first down, 
that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Here's Trubisky. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Mitchell Trubisky with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Bills are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over. And here a late turnover leads to a fourth quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here, and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. An extra point by Bass, up and good. And the lead is up to 15 now. A drive there of just four plays. And it was all capped off by Mitchell Trubisky's touchdown run. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You'd better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. Now yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. To throw again on second down. Watson. So first and ten now in Buffalo territory at the 44-yard line. Again, it's Watson. This is Akins hauling in the short pass. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. To throw is Watson. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills' 15-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Here's a give to Lindsey. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. Second down, right back to Lindsey. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. Here's Watson. A bullet throw, but incomplete. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Desperation time. Watson on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Bills are going to get the football back. 
So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. There defensively to knock it away was the safety, Justin Reed. Throwing again on second and ten. Trubisky. Buying time to his left. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Whitney Merciless picks up his second sack of the afternoon. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities, and he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. Let's see what they draw up here. Third and long following the sack of Trubisky. Trubisky now down around his goal line. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. It'll be a net of 40 yards there following a 43-yard punt, three-yard return, and out will come the offense as they take over. And we move to spotlighting Brandon Cooks. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. That catch good for only a couple. From the 50, it's Watson. That's complete to Cobb. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Back to throw, Watson. Screen play, Johnson. Runs over him, and he's going to get this inside the 30. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. They'll look to throw again. And he'll find Aikens there, complete. That catch good for only a couple. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackle. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Throwing again on second down. Watson, and that'll be incomplete. Now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. Watson. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They will indeed snap it to Watson. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with a football. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bills are going to get the football back. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? But well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. The Bills going to take over again on offense. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Out, 
On first down, they'll start out with Moss. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Right back to Moss. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Singletary again, and he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And intercepted, maybe the turning point they need. Desmond King picks it, and to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Well, in all likelihood, this ball game's still over. I mean, even with the interception, two-score game, they need a miracle. Curious decision to even throw the ball in that situation, but maybe they saw a stacked line of scrimmage and said, hey, it's better to try and throw it than to try and run against it. In any event, I think you're exactly right. Now, the other team can pad their stats, but I don't think they're going to win. Yeah, but still, don't change the channel just yet. Now Watson. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. Here's Watson. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Well, that drive wasn't a case of wanting to put points on the board. It was needing they to, had to having had to, to, and they didn't get it done. Yeah, didn't get it done, and now you look at the situation and the point differential, two scores, pretty much game, set, man. How about the takeaway, though, huh? How about those defensive guys? Buffalo set to get the football back here, and they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. And Trubisky down to a knee, and that is all she wrote. So it's a victory here for the Buffalo Bills, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big time performance down the stretch. So for the Bills, they're on a nice early roll as they move to three and one with a win here. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Meanwhile, for Houston, they'll drop down to one and three. And they'll try again next week at home against New England. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports. Okay, before we take a look at the stats, we need to acknowledge that the interception slider needs to be changed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. The Buffalo Bills defeat the Houston Texans 22 to seven. Mm. Interesting game. The Texans had 287 total offense, but the Buffalo Bills had 101 rushing yards compared to Texas, the Texans 35.
The Texans did win in every other category, however. 252 passing yards, 15 first down, 22 punt return yards, 96 kick return yards, and 405 total yards. The turnover battle was won by the Bills, however, in a plus four. They had two turnovers themselves, but six from the side of the Texans. So eight total in the game. Third down conversions were dead even, 5 for 12 on both sides. Fourth down conversions were also even at 0% conversion rate for both teams, but Texas did go, the Texans did go for two of them. They were 0 for 2. Two point conversions, Buffalo missed out on the only one that they tried. Red down percentage, however, the Bills were 4 for 4 with two touchdowns and two field goals, and the Texans were 1 for 5 with only one touchdown. No penalties in the game and the possession time, 21 minutes, 57 seconds for Houston and Buffalo had 18 minutes, three seconds. Let's go ahead and take a look at our top performers for players. Deshaun Watson, 27 for 41 for 286 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. Josh Allen was two for three with 19 yards and one interception, but he did get injured in the game and had to be taken out. Therefore, Mitchell Trubisky stepped in for him. He was 13 for 21 for 129 yards and one interception. When we look at rushing, Philip Lindsay had eight attempts for nine yards, and Devin Singletary also had eight attempts for 17 yards. Zach Moss had seven carries, 37 yards. Mitch Trubisky had six carries for 47 yards and two rushing touchdowns. David Johnson, four carries, 18 yards. Mark Ingram, the second, had two attempts, six yards. And Deshaun Watson carried the ball once for two yards. When it comes to receiving, Jordan Atkins led the way in receptions. He had 10 for 57 yards. Brandon Cooks had five catches for 107 yards. Stephon Diggs for Buffalo led the way for them with four catches, 51 yards. David Johnson also had three catches for 29 yards. Dawson Knox had three catches, 35 yards. Singletary had three catches, 22 yards. Beasley, three catches, 29 yards. Brevin Jordan had three catches for 22 yards. And Randall Cobb, Kiki Kuti, and Philip Lindsay all had two catches. Cobb had 30 yards. Kuti had 27 yards. Lindsay had 14. And Gabriel Davis had one catch for six yards. Jacob Hollister, one catch, five yards. When we look at tackles, Tremaine Edmonds led the way with seven solo tackles. He also led the way with seven assisted tackles. Therefore, he had 14 total tackles. Matt Milano had 11 tackles for himself, and Kevin Pierre-Lewis led the way for the Texans defense with 10 tackles himself. Micah Hyde also had six tackles. Tackles for loss, one apiece for Devin Kennard, Mario Addison, Jerry Hughes, Christian Kirksey, A.J. Epinesa, Shaq Lawson, Whitney Merciless, Matt Milano, and Tremaine Edmonds. Two sacks for A.J. Epinesa from Buffalo and two sacks for Whitney Merciless from the from Houston. Mario Addison had one sack as well as Jerry Hughes, Brandon Dunn, Kevin Pierre-Lewis, Matt Milano, and Ed Oliver. Tredavious White had three interceptions. Desmond King the second had another one for himself on the season and Zach Cunningham also had an interception. Jerry Hughes, A.J. Epinesa, they forced fumbles, and so did Matt Milano. Mario Addison, Taron Johnson, and A.J. Epinesa picked up. They recovered a fumble. And that's about it.